obviously we're very concerned about what's happening in Hong Kong and, and, uh, and feel very badly for the people whose lives are being affected on all sides. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the fact, though, is that Hong Kong is a very resilient place. You know, Hong Kong has faced hardship in the past. Uh, Hong Kong will get through this, uh, will we'll return to have its... Have you seen the worst? I don't know. I don't know. And uh, I, I, I hope we have. But, uh, but you know, who, who can tell? It's, it's clearly still a fluid situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah so, so, but Hong Kong will, 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 will recover. We're investing for the long term, as we always have. And in, in that sense, we're, we're perfectly happy to go full speed ahead on our digital bank. 32% of your business essentially comes from Hong Kong, if I'm correct with those numbers. Uh, you know, what should investors be prepared for in terms of how you're managing the business that exists, retail banking, commercial banking in the region, uh, in terms of asset quality stress, uh, you know, rise in delinquencies, NPLs essentially, are you worried uh, that in the next few quarters we might see some skeletons tumble out of the closet? I mean, it's, it's always possible. I'm, I'm very comfortable with, with our underwriting standards. I think we've, we have extraordinarily low <coughs> credit costs across our group today. It's because of the work that we've done over the past four or five years to clean things up. Uh, you know, we, we reported our earnings a couple of weeks ago and the third quarter earnings in Hong Kong were higher than the third quarter earnings last year, both income and profit. And loan impairments have not picked up. So, now that doesn't mean that there aren't problems to come in the future. I, but, I, but my observation is that through a very difficult time in Hong Kong in the third quarter, when the when the protests were really peaking, our business remained very very robust. Okay, uh, and into 2020 also, you, you're not too worried about the situation as of now. Look, we have to watch it. Uh, the economy is now in recession. Uh, we know that it hasn't impacted property prices as yet. Uh, it hasn't attracted. It hasn't impacted the attractiveness of Hong Kong as, as a global trading center. Uh, it clearly has impacted the retail and tourism sectors. Yeah. We have a little bit less exposure there. Uh, it's also not in impacted the degree to which Hong Kong is a gateway to China, and, and China manages important global initiatives mm -hmm. in close cooperation with Hong Kong. So, mm -hmm. so the, the central role of Hong Kong as it relates to a big part of our corporate business is entirely intact. That just makes me wonder, is there more hype uh, to uh, the situation in Hong Kong in terms of business activity in the region uh, than uh, what's being reported? More hype in uh, terms of more hype in, in terms of you know uh, the, the, the impact that these protests have had in, on business activity. Is think, there more hype? Well, that, I, I think the to that than reality. Well, we, uh, we've seen the impact in GDP growth, right? Yeah. The the, the, the regions in recession. And we, the retail we, sales numbers. The retail sales numbers are are very very bad, yeah. and the tourism numbers are, are bad. We've had a dramatic reduction in, in tourism, especially from the mainland. So uh, how so, is that not showing up in the financial sector? I think it is showing up in the financial sector for typically smaller banks that are that are banking those small merchants, okay. uh, small retailers, uh, small hotel owners, etc. Uh, so I think you know, clearly it's, it's impacting the uh, the economy and therefore it's impacting some elements of finance. Sure. Uh, it's just not impacting us. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.